better if you stock with the mic. Ah, there is the automatic mic. Thank you very much. I want to thank the organizers. It's very nice to be here. I hope I will learn a lot of things this week. I'm not an expertise in machine learning. I know a few things about quantum simulators. And also, this is kind of a call because we have some ideas that we think the field of quantum machine learning can help us very much. Machine learning also, no quantum machine learning. So I'm very happy and open to collaborations and so on. So I'm going to give a Blackboard talk because I saw this Blackboard and I couldn't, I couldn't subtract myself to the pleasure of using it. So it's, uh, I'm mostly going to give some ideas of the things that we are interested in and what we are doing and how we understand a little bit this world of quantum simulators. Okay? So this is a work with Ayaka Usui, which is a Japanese postdoc now in my group, and Maria Garcia Diaz, which is in Madrid, and she was also a postdoc of mine. And the three of us, really, we have a lot of fun working together, and we started uh, this line. So what we were interested in is in the following. What is a quantum simulator and what a quantum simulator is useful for? Okay, so we all know what it's a quantum simulator, but I will give you my ideas about that, how I understand it and what it's useful. So a quantum simulator a priori is a system that it's able to replicate the physics of another system which is more complex, okay? And up to now, all the quantum simulators that we have are mostly analog quantum simulators. So are experimental platforms that they are used, especially up to now still, to simulate complex many body physics, okay? But we expect that this idea of quantum simulators will be extended and that the quantum simulators will be platforms that they will be able to simulate many other things. Not only the physics of many body physics, quantum many body physics, but also we expect that it will be able to solve, I don't know, out of equilibrium physics or that it will be able to solve high energy physics and so on and so forth. So if we think on how quantum simulators they have to develop in the future, or how I think that they will develop in the future, they will be platforms which are highly versatile. And they should be able to use the same platform, analog or digital, to simulate many different things. So for instance, if I want to have a quantum state, I can ask a quantum simulator to give me this quantum state on demand. So this is not the real uh, state of the art nowadays because they don't work like that and we are just starting and all the platforms and even the quantum simulators, so these quantum computers which are single purpose quantum simulators, I have to say that I am a big fan of quantum simulators and at this moment I work in quantum information but I believe quantum simulators is real, the only field that has clear quantum advantage, okay? So, but we expect that these quantum simulators will give us whatever we need, no? I need a GIZ state, I need to simulate quantum chemistry, I want to do a medicament and so on and so forth. So, which is the definition, wide definition of a quantum simulator? Well, that depends, okay? So, but if we take the most general definition of a quantum simulator, we arrive at something which is called a universal quantum simulator. So, and I will say that a universal quantum simulator Okay, is the simulator which is able to simulate any other quantum system. Okay? So has to replicate the physics of any other simulate the physics physics of any other system. Okay, and what does it mean to replicate the whole physics? Replicate the whole physics means that it has to replicate, for instance, the eigenstates, the eigenvalues, all possible local, all possible local uh, expectation values of local observables, or observables, okay? Uh, replicate the same expectation values of the observables replicate the same out of equilibrium physics and whatever you can ask for, okay? 
the, all the possible correlations, okay, two-point correlations, three-point correlations, whatever. So if we have a quantum simulator that is able to do that from any other quantum simulator, from any other quantum system, we will say that this is a universal quantum simulator. And of course, you will say this doesn't exist, but they exist, okay? Theoretically, they exist, okay? How do you know that they exist? Well, because a priori, of course, any Hamiltonian, it's unique, no? So two Hamiltonians, if they have the same eigenvalues and the same eigen uh, eigenvalues and eigen vectors, they are identical. But the way to do that, it's the following. And the idea is very simple, okay? But it cannot be applied. So imagine that I have a small system that, so the dimension of my system one, which is the one that I want to simulate, is given by a Hilbert space, okay? Let's say of dimension, let's assume that I have qubits, okay? I have n qubits to, to the n, okay? And I want to simulate, you will agree with me that if I simulate the same energy spectrum with the same eigenvalues, most or less, more, most of the physics will be done, no? So I have my system and it has this kind of, I don't know, some structure, okay? And now I go to another system which is bigger. Increasing just by a qubit, I increase the Hilbert dimension by space two, okay? I double the, the Hilbert dimension. So if my let's say this is my target Hamiltonian, the one that I want to simulate, and I take a quantum simulator, okay? And imagine that the dimension, so I call it target, the dimension of the quantum simulator, it's two to the n plus one, a single qubit more, okay? I already have the double of the Hilbert space. So imagine if I take many other, okay, instead of only one double, so not only I double, I make it much larger, of course I can find a state, a system, a quantum simulator that will has this kind of a structure, okay? And now maybe it has that, has that, has that, and then continues and has many other things. And it's able to simulate this part of the small system, okay? So this can do, we can do it, okay? So a priori, this is a possibility and it's fantastic, okay? So I'm able to simulate that. This is a remarkable work by the group of Tony Cubitt and later uh, Tamara Kohler in which they show that, which is the price to pay for that, okay? So indeed they show even that a one-dimensional translational invariant Hamiltonian can simulate the physics of any other quantum system, okay? But there is, of course, there is not free lunch. Okay, so there is not free lunch because you need a lot, so you have to increase a lot, the Hilbert space, and not only that, in order to simulate, because of course you can say, well, this can be lag, no? But you have to adjust all the couplings that you will have here in your quantum simulator in order to reproduce the physics of this one, okay? And nowadays, to adjust these couplings will mean that if I have, I don't know, imagine that my universal, so this is universal quantum simulator, Okay, I will call it like that. And honestly speaking, I found it incredible that with one dimensional translational invariant, and it is a Heisenberg model, in 1D you can simulate the physics of any other thing in the world. Okay, wow, this is something. But, of course, you need, a, yes, yes. You have, of course, now we will talk about locality, okay? So, then you, no, it's translational invariant, it's two-body interactions. It's very simple, this one, okay? But which is the dimension? Huge. And whatever, how are the couplings? Well, here's the other price, no? So you have to control. There is, first of all, there is not, a, if we had that, of, uh, we, will be, we will not be here, okay? So there is, um, there is not a constructive approach. So you give me a Hamiltonian and I cannot construct this universe. I have no idea. So this is a theoretical work which is proof with some perturbative gadgets and so on. So no, it's not constructive. They don't know how to do it. They know that they exist. But if that exists, it means two things. That the Hilbert space has to be huge and this is intuitively clear that it has to be like that. And the interactions between the parties in my universal Hamiltonian, they have to be adjusted with a precision which will go more than 20 orders of magnitude. Which means that no experiment will do it, of course. No, we are not in this point. But this is a good point, okay, to know that there is this kind of Hamiltonians or universal simulators that they will be able at some moment, maybe, I don't know, in 10 years, we know how to do that much better. 
Okay, so this was our starting point, and we were asking ourselves, can we create a quantum simulator, okay, uh, that it's able to simulate the physics of another system without changing the Hilbert uh, space dimension with the same number of qubits, okay, or qubits, or whatever. And the answer is yes, to some extent, and this is what I wanted to explain you, and that ask you for help if you are interested, okay, in this problem, which is a little bit, well, I think it's quite close to the things that many of you know. So, and we were interested in local Hamiltonians. Why local Hamiltonians? Well, because local Hamiltonians is most of the physics of many body physics is local, so local Hamiltonians. So I write my Hamiltonian, I will say it's K local, if I can write it as the sum of some Hamiltonians HI, where HI has at most, at most, K local interactions. Okay, like all we know. And our idea was, okay, and we assume that the dimension of this local Hamiltonian which is my target Hamiltonian, is G, whatever dimension is, so I will call it T. Okay, and I want to have a quantum simulator Hamiltonian. I will call it QS, that has locality, okay, which is K prime, okay, has the same dimension, of the target, it's equal to the dimension of the quantum simulator, equal to D, but K prime, it's smaller than K, so it's less local. So for instance, we were asking, is it possible to simulate lattice gauge theories, which has four body interactions or three body interactions if you are in a triangular lattice, or Kitayev models, which is five local interactions, in a lab, just using two local interactions, a Hamiltonian which is two local. This is our goal, okay? And the answer is sometimes yes, sometimes no, and we need a lot of help to do it because to an experimentalist, if you go and you say, listen, please, can you simulate lattice gauge theories? And I give you a two local Hamiltonian that gives me the low energy physics. Well, they, we, they will be super happy, and we also, because five local interactions are very difficult to put in an experiment. Why we can do that? For several reasons we can do it. The first thing is because the set of local Hamiltonians is a convex structure. So local Hamiltonians, form a convex set structure, which means the following. They are like that, okay? And this is, I think, very interesting, and we are trying to, so this is k equal one. So Hamiltonians, they have one body interaction. There is not entanglement. They don't interact with anybody else. This is k equal two, two body interactions. This is k equal whatever, L l body interactions, and the set of, so KL, it's bigger than KL minus one, pa, 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 K1, okay, so these are like that. So a priori, you can have, a, let's put here, a three body Hamiltonian, or a four body Hamiltonian, okay. We have here, something like that. Okay, let's assume that this is my k equal three, where I have already in the triangular lattice, a lattice gauge theory, which I would like to study, and there is, and maybe it's here, I don't know, I have no idea, but I have to look if there is a closer k2 Hamiltonian that it's able to reproduce some of the physics. It will not reproduce the whole physics, yes? Sorry, ground state, no. This is Hamiltonians, this is the, the convex structure of this is Hamiltonians of k equal one. All the Hamiltonians of k equal two. All the Hamiltonians of k equal l, and of course, all possible Hamiltonians which are like that, okay? All Hamiltonians. So the local Hamiltonians, 
So they are Hamiltonians which are not local, okay, but it's a convex set. So if I sum two Hamiltonians, I have a Hamiltonian. This is what it means, a convex set. And this is very nice because, of course, it has to be like that. We have proved theoretically that it's like that. But, of course, when I say I, I have a k-local Hamiltonian, that means that I have k-local interactions, but also this one, k2 interactions, k1 interactions, because the sum of all these things, it's a convex sum, so I can have, and this is the reason, I have a local Hamiltonian which has single interaction terms. Typical, Heisenberg, sigma x, sigma x, plus sigma y. It's a two-local, but it has also sigma y, which is one local, okay? So this is our starting point. And now we have to go to that, okay? So I delete all these things of here. And so how do we do that? Well, we do it very pedestrians because we are from a small village and we don't know so much. So we say, let's see first what happens in the easiest case in which the Hamiltonians commute, okay? And first we define what, is, what it means to simulate Okay, and then I want to say, now we are, we are interested here in dynamics, okay? Because you can say, listen, in statics, maybe we can use MPS or tensor, well, we can use, we use tensor networks and they are super good, are variational, but they are super good. And I can, all, I can simulate the ground state and maybe I can simulate some excited states, not the whole spectrum. Second thing that we assume is that we have very big systems, so we cannot diagonalize because there is not any technique to diagonalize. Because if I can diagonalize, it is done. But if I have 100 qubits, two to the 100, as far as I know, I don't know, you know much better, there is no algorithm that allows me to diagonalize something like that. So I don't have access to the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the whole system. Uh, this is our premise. Although we are going to work with four or five qubits because we don't know how to do it better. But this is the, the physical scenario that we have in mind. So we define what does it mean to do the dynamics. So we make this trivial definition, okay? I say that uh, the dynamics, okay, my quantum simulator simulates the dynamics of my target Hamiltonian H target at time t and state psi, it's, it's, it's stupid definition, but we have to put some, some definitions. If, okay, with simulates with precision or error, I don't know how to call it, epsilon, if I have state plus I T H Q S E to minus I T Hamiltonian target, my target Hamiltonian over Psi, okay, the fidelity is one minus Epsilon. Okay, so this is quite obvious. So if these two Hamiltonians, they do the same physics, that will be one, the fidelity will be one on this state Psi for any time T and will simulate exactly. And if this is different, that it will be different because Epsilon will be between zero and one, I will say that my Quantum simulator is able to simulate this state psi up to some time t, okay? Well, with this error. If the error is small, maybe that it's enough. Which is the worst possible scenario? The worst possible scenario is the minimum, okay, over all possible psi's and times, of course. This is the worst. Whatever it's better than that, it's okay. E to h, the Hamiltonian, this is time evolution, no? Plus i. So I'm doing the time evolution on this state with my Hamiltonian target, and then I'm just doing with a quantum simulator. If these two guys, okay, they get a one, that means that the fidelity of the state that I'm obtaining is the same, so the... H is the target Hamiltonian. You give me a target Hamiltonian. Sorry? The H here. Ah, yes, sorry. 
A, sorry, sorry, I didn't realize, sorry, excuse me. Of course, of course, yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, exactly, okay? So this is the, the worst thing, okay. So let me go, yeah, okay. So let me start by exact, when I can do exact, so exact dynamics. When I will do exact dynamics, so it means that psilon will be equal to zero, no? And then my dynamics will be exact. So, well, what I have to do, so let, let me construct the following, okay? So let me write this thing of here. It's, it's, it's everything, it's very basic, eh? So don't be upset. my target Hamiltonian over phi, psi, and I constructed like psi a to the i t h q s minus, no, let me write it like a function like that, with obviously that will be h of t will be t times the quantum simulator minus the target, plus e t, I think, e i squared divided by two, the, uh, so I use just baker Hausdorff formula, hqs with a target, plus, now it will be all, the, all kinds of, of Hamiltonians I did not commute, okay? So the first case is, well, assume that my Hamiltonians commute, okay? If my Hamiltonians commute, I only have to take care of this term of here, okay? So if H target and HQS commute, then I have an object here that I'm going to call it the connector, which is this, the first term is call it like that, is h of qs minus h of target, okay? And if this connector, which is a Hamiltonian, it's degenerated in some superspace, of course, then I will be able to reproduce the physics identical. It's not sufficient that you have two Hamiltonian side commute because in order to reproduce the physics, you have to have the same eigenvalues because it's it goes by an exponential of the energy of the eigenvalue of each of them. So you can have two Hamiltonians that they commute and the dynamics is completely out, okay? But you can construct it. So the first thing is, okay, I give you your Hamiltonian, construct me a Hamiltonian that commutes, okay? To with that, and again, you cannot diagonalize, okay? There is no way you can diagonalize. Well, if you can diagonalize, you do it. So how do you do that, okay? You say, okay, one way to do it, maybe they are more clever ones, is say, if I want, so the target Hamiltonian, it's always given. So I will put you a simple example, which is this one. Imagine that you give me as a target Hamiltonian this one. It's a three body, so target Hamiltonian. Okay, and it's this one. It's from J equal to one to fourth, okay? J three, and now I have sigma Z of J, sigma Z of J plus one, sigma Z of J plus two, plus H X, sigma J of X. Okay, so this is the target Hamiltonian that it's given. And now you ask me, give me a, yes. Yes. So but they live in the same Hilbert space. They do. Yeah, yeah, I ask myself, I say, what I'm going to do is to ask that the target and the Hamiltonian, they have the same dimension. I put it in some way, but for sure, I always live, if not, I cannot do that. Okay, absolutely right. So this is what I demand. I demand because I want to do that and because I don't find fear to go, fair to go to an experimentalist and say, okay, now you have this experimental platform, increase it by 20 orders of magnitude or 20 qubits. This is not practical, okay? So I say with this platform that you have, same, 
you use that, okay? So how can I find a Hamiltonian that commutes with that? Of course, this is four body, so you can diagonalize and so on, but I will give you the, the quantum simulator Hamiltonian, and of course that the, the locality is smaller, okay? I want a two body Hamiltonian, it's this one, okay? Sum over J equal one to fourth of, it's a Heisenberg one, sigma X of J sigma X of J plus one plus J Y sigma Y of J sigma Y of J plus one plus sigma Z of sigma Z of J sigma Z of J plus one. Okay, so these two Hamiltonians, they commute, okay? In general, here I can do it because I can play, but imagine that instead of having four spins, you have many more, okay? Then they will not commute, but how do you find it? So the way to find one without diagonalizing, it's the following, okay? Which is the following. I take what it's called the Hilbert-Schmidt norm, which you can do it without diagonalizing. So my goal here is that I want to do the things without diagonalizing, and I demand that this is equal to zero, because if the Hilbert-Schmidt norm of a matrix, this is a matrix, okay? So I have to define it as a matrix, is zero, then they commute, okay? And so, for instance, in this case, what happens? That when I do that, which is very easy, okay, I found the conditions, I found then the conditions. Jx has to be equal to Jy has to be equal to Jz, it has to be equal to J, and x is fixed. Okay, when I do this, I know that these two Hamiltonians commute, okay? In a superspace, not the whole, they commute, they commute, okay? And now, I do this, I play with these characteristics in order that there is a superspace, because now I'm having my connector, which is H, this is not zero, eh? They commute, but this is different from zero. This is a Hamiltonian. And now I play that I find some eigenvalues, okay, doing that, so that they are degenerated and the dynamics there, it's, it's correct. It's the same, fine. This will not be the ground, the state, and so on. These are just plain tests, okay? So now you can say, okay, which is the priority? Now let's, yes. I want to find two things, that they commute, so I demand that the Hilbert-Schmidt norm, which is you have a matrix and it's the sum of all the elements of the matrix, you don't know, diagonalize, the square, pa -pa -pam, pa -pa -pam is zero. That ensures me that it commutes. And in order that ensures me that it commutes, it gives me also some parameters which I will be able to play so that it commutes and it's degenerated. Because if it commutes and it's degenerated, has the same energy eigenvalues, so all the states that they live in the superspace which is degenerated will have the same dynamics. So I'm able to reproduce with a two body, so this is a three body Hamiltonian, okay? I'm able to reproduce with a two body Hamiltonian the physics in a superspace of the three body. Okay, it's primary, okay, but it's the way we think we have to start. So when you are at this point, you say, okay, if I give you two, absolutely arbitrary Hamiltonians, of course they will not commute, that's obvious, no? But how many eigenstates they will share? So this is a question that we ask ourselves. Can we see, okay, how many eigenstates? Because that will be okay, okay? So, no, sorry. So this is okay, full dot, exact di dynamics. Now, I can have exact dynamics even if they do not commute, okay? Because what will happen? Imagine that I give you two Hamiltonians that they do not commute, but they share some eigenval vectors, okay? So, so what I will do? I will say that in this superspace they commute, okay? The other ones I will take it out, I don't care. And I will reproduce the same, okay? How can I do that in these ones that they commute, how can I degenerate my, my, my connector so that there I can do the physics? and so on. Okay, so the question is, generally Hamiltonians, they do not commute, okay? And I say, well, I don't care. Give me the target Hamiltonian, which is four body, and ask me, what is the quantum simulator two body that I can go to the experimentalists, that they have some common eigenvalues, eigenvectors. 
And in this superspace, they will, I will be able to manipulate and have the same dynamics. And this is the question, how many? Okay, how many, but this is a very difficult question, okay? So we don't know how many, and a priori I will say that how many is zero, but we are able to give a bound, okay? So given two Hamiltonians, well, it's not very interesting, but given two arbitrary Hamiltonians in the same dimension, obviously, the number, maximum number, whoops, I have a stone in my, in my shoe, and it's not very practical, okay, so. I want to go a little bit fast because this is just the warming up and I would like to show you the not warming up because this is where I'm sure that you will have many ideas that maybe can help there, okay? So there are some questions that, questions. Given H target K, Fine. Ah, H quantum simulator K prime with K prime smaller than K because if not, that doesn't have sense, such that R that they share R eigenvectors. Okay? No idea. I can only give a bound, but I don't know how to do that, okay? Uh, so, and then we can find us, no idea. So in general, the, the answer of this question is zero, okay? In general, if I give you arbitrary, HQS and HT is zero. But here we are asking something different. I give you the target Hamiltonian, which has K local terms, and I ask you, can you find me which is the best, okay? And what does it mean best? The uh, quantum simulator, which is more local, so it has K prime, two body, for instance, smaller than K, that shares a maximum number of eigenvectors with the previous one. The most that they share, the best will be to do the dynamics, okay? And I want to finish with something which maybe it's more interesting, so which is the following. So there are a lot of questions that we don't know, no? But now I want to give you another limit, okay? Indeed, this is a theorem, I think, that which is something that we, we have proved, but we don't understand very well. Okay, theorem, okay? Every Hamiltonian. quantum simulator, so the ones that we want to do, simulates epsilon star, simulates any target Hamiltonian any target Hamiltonian at any state now this is much more general than before. At any state, psi and time t, with this error. So it's a bound which is not very tight, but it's kind of, is the minimum of one and then delta h time divided by two. Okay, so of course, if it's one means it doesn't simulate it because the error is one minus by two is horrible. But what is this? This, it's called the spectral, spectral diameter of the connector. is a Hamiltonian, which is the difference of these Hamiltonians, and the spectral diameter is the difference between the largest and the smallest eigenvalue, okay? So delta of H is lambda max minus lambda min, where lambda max is the maximum eigenvalue, 
and lambda mean the minimum value. So again, notice that to calculate the maximum eigenvalue or the minimum eigenvalue of a matrix, you don't have to diagonalize, so it's not hard, okay? The minimum, there is SPD conditions in order to find which is the lowest energy of a Hamiltonian, and the maximum is, you revert your Hamiltonian, you call it main minus your original Hamiltonian, and now you find the maximum. So the other ones, you cannot do it, but here you can do it without diagonalizing. Yes, I'm going to finish, I'm right, okay? So, and this is, well, so this is important because to calculate the spectral diameter of a Hamiltonian doesn't require diagonalization, okay? And it depends on that. Why? We have no idea, okay? So we have done it with some cases, and we found something very surprising, which is, for instance, it's much easier to simulate the dynamics of a five local Hamiltonian with a two-body than a three-body with a two-body. But we have just played very, very simple rules, so we cannot say that this is definitive, but this is a theorem, so this is proof. Yes? No, 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 any Hamiltonian. Yeah, I mean, look, the bound, it's one, means that the error so it's horrible, okay? But what does it mean that? That you have to do, obviously, that H, so the spectral diameter by time divided by two has to be smaller than one, okay? So that you have to have a spectral diameter that the smaller it is, better it will be, no? Two divided by T. So uh, if this is a smaller, okay, then mm, you can go up to this time and so on. And this, so the question is the following. Which many body Hamiltonians, K local or whatever, how is this spectral diameter? So we find that the for five, five, but it's only some examples that we have done, the spectral diameter decreases, so we are able to reproduce it with a two local Hamiltonian, okay, very, for some times, of course. I mean, these times are small, so it's a Taylor expansion, so our, our our preliminary results. But these are these questions that we don't know, and with that I would like to thank, I know, to thank you, yes, to finish and to thank you for your attention, thanks, bye. <laughs>Thanks a lot for uh, this interesting talk. Um, I may, might have two questions. Like the first is that, so when writing down the fidelity as like the way to estimate how how uh, how good is the position, um, you could have maybe a case where um, your uh, quantum simulator generates also component components which are perpendicular to your the, to your the, uh, the time evolved target state, does this somewhat enter your uh, estimates? Um, I mean, no, no, it doesn't enter because I think it's super simple eh, what we do. So we say it's rotting equation, okay? So the evolution is e to minus the energy, I, I times the energy t. So if the energy is generated, fine, but if you are in an eigenstate which is perpendicular, it doesn't matter if the energy will be degenerated. So now I'm thinking, okay, so the only thing that matters, even, doesn't matter. I can have, uh, now I understand the question, yes, I can have a superspace in which I have, I don't know, the states which are the ones that they are there, orthogonal, doesn't matter, if they are degenerated. Anything which lives in this superspace will be, I will be able to dynamically evolve it with a good precision. And if I may, a, a second one, a short one. <laughs> Good. Uh, um, to some extent, like when thinking about gauge theories, like the general way or like the proposals for implementation also start like from say two local Hamiltonians and then to generate like a three uh, local term typically by some kind of perturbation theory. Um, so I guess this is all covered here. No, 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 no. no. So because like it's something different. Okay. It's different because we do it the other way around, no? So what I have at, uh, lock, uh, in, in, in quantum simulators, okay? So how do you put uh, three-body terms? Because you have to have a flux, okay? So if you have a plaquette which is three-body and then you put a flux, 
okay, magnetic flux in order to generate the lattice gauge theory, necessarily these three guys e evolve. So I don't do it from like in, in high energy physics from two perturbatively to three. No, I say in the quantum simulator for sure they have at this moment three if you have a triangular plaquette, four if you have a square plaquette, 2D plaquette, again, because you put magnetic fields, so these four guys are involved. It's a forward interaction. And now I say, with this, can I go to the quantum simulator, not perturbative, and say, I don't know how to do it, if I, well, that will be fantastic, but we, this is our idea. Maybe there is a two-body that is able to simulate a part of the lattice gauge theory in the lab. And I never say that in the two body it has to be next neighbors. Maybe I will find a two body, which is this guy with this one of that, and the experimentalist will tell me, listen, this is rubbish. Yeah, maybe. Other questions? Yeah, thank you for this inspiring talk. I was wondering, it's a bit off topic perhaps, but if I'm interested in many body physics, um, how important is it to have the same eigenvalues as well? Like what is important to have uh, the, the interesting many body physics? Isn't it sufficient often to have the same eigenstructure of the eigenstates? No. Maybe for apart the, from the generacies? For the, for the, for the, so normally, and correct me if I'm wrong, so now what we do, so we want to in the quantum simulators, no, so typical, no, so you do mod insulator, you do it with cold gases, and then you have the ground state, okay, and you check the ground state, okay, or maybe you are interested in the low energy physics, but as soon as you have dynamics, which has never been done, okay, like, I'm I sure, I mean, that's yes. obvious that the dynamics will be different, but yeah. the question is, is um, uh, like if I'm interested in what are uh, the relevant ground states or uh, like which phases exist and then, then often say apart from degeneracies maybe the eigen Then absolutely. Yeah. If you say I have a many body system which is very complex so I want to study I don't know uh, high TC superconductivity and I, it's enough that I have yes absolutely. But my idea is the following, which I can be completely wrong, okay? So because I know how is the structure of the Hamiltonians, okay? And in nature, most of the Hamiltonians are two-body, and so what? Okay, because now we have quantum simulators that it doesn't have to be, two. so our idea, which is very normal, no? So we started saying we want to reproduce what it's known, fantastic. But why we are not going to reproduce in few years something which is not known? Okay, so it doesn't happen in nature, and so what? Plastic neither, unfortunately. Okay, so and we created. So I'm saying that the physics is super rich in quantum simulators. So it's not only to simulate the ground states of quantum many body systems that we know from condensed matter that we don't know, which is super interesting and very important, but there are many other things. So maybe creating Hamiltonians that gives a physics which we never expected because it doesn't happen in a natural way, not in solids, not in anything, but we can simulate that. So for me, this is very exciting. So although, I don't know, maybe we will not find anything, but I am very surprised. So normally when the people talk about quantum uh, uh, Hamiltonians, they say, these are the Hamiltonians, okay? And this is the Hamiltonians that are in nature. And my answer is, say, and well, go here, okay, to see what happens. I don't know. Thank you. Other questions, comments? I will delete because this is very distracting. Okay, so let's thank our speaker again.